Hello. I'm on my business page, right? Oh my god. Okay. Hey, it's CC from CC Restyled and I am um oh, just doing a little live session today. We are going to be doing some blendy blending on this um purple Bombay chest right here. So, um the top of this was actually marble and I went ahead and I put two coats of slick actually the top was marble. Yes, wait, uh, sorry, I've done, prepped so many of this, these this week, I'm trying to remember what I did to this one. The top of this one was marble, and I slick-sticked two coats um, on the marble because marble doesn't really take paint well, so I needed to use an adhesion primer um, in order to get my paint to stick, which I did. Slick Stick is a Dixie Belle product, and it's it's a really great adhesion primer for anything not wood, so porous surfaces, glass, um, laminate, things like that that don't typically take paint. I use my slick stick. So two coats of that and I let it dry overnight. The bottom of this was actually painted prior to. So when I'm working with a piece that is already painted, um, I either strip it or I paint over it. And the way I determine whether I strip it or paint over it is is the paint job that's currently on there failing? If the paint job that is currently on there is failing, chipping, bubbling, peeling, cracking, I just go ahead and strip the whole thing. Um, if it's intact and I just don't love it, so that's why I'm painting over it, I just scuff sand it lightly um, so that it's got some grabbiness to it or tooth for the paint to adhere to. So um, this paint job, I don't know who did it, but it wasn't so bad. I was using my fingernail to try to scrape at it and it wasn't coming off, but um, it was pretty, pretty decent paint job. It just wasn't to my liking, so that's why I'm painting over it. Um, I gave it a um, scuff sanding all over with the surf prep. I got some advice from, uh, I had to ask Brandy, because I can't, I'm trying to figure out the sanding pads and grits and all that stuff. It's a little different than regular um, sanding pads. So I got her advice and I used a, one of the foam pads, which was awesome because it scuffed up my surface that was painted without making the paint all gummed up and gross. And then, um, I was able to go over the details too with the pad and get a scuff sand on the details without ruining the details and I was able to get them really well so it was pretty awesome and so that's what I did for prep for this piece and as you can see I've got a coat of paint on it already I chose aubergine from Dixie Belle it is this super deep eggplant color and hey everybody thank you for hopping on um, I'll try to catch questions but if I miss any I'll go back later and answer them I just um, I like to paint instead of talk quite as much on live videos, but, but thanks for tuning in and hi. Um, <clears throat> Aubergine, dark eggplant purple color from Dixie Belle. It, this is my favorite color, you guys, like literally my favorite color. And I say that about all colors, but this is, this is the real favorite color. So um, I painted that one coat, let it dry. And now we're going to do some blendy blend on coat number 2E2. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my aubergine. And I've got some Midnight Sky here. I'm sorry, no, cav caviar. I'm going to use caviar to create some shadowing. It's just a nice rich black. And ah, I got it. Didn't even have to tap it on the floor. That's winning. Winning! And then I've got some amethyst. Um, amethyst is a super bright purpley amethyst color from Dixie Belle. And I love this color. It's not the kind of color I typically paint an entire piece, you know, like this color. But it's really great for highlighting uh, and blending in with other colors. Um, and that's primarily how I use it, but it is a really pretty color. Um, very rich purple. But I'm gonna go ahead and open all of my paint colors that I'm using so that they're easy to access. Since I'm gonna be doing some blendy blending and I need to work fairly quickly while I'm blending so that um, the paint doesn't dry up on me. Um, see how pretty that, I don't wanna spill it all over, but see how pretty that amethyst is? 
Oh, oh, and you know what? I almost forgot. Um, they are molds on here. Um, oh, I'll get back to the molds in one second. When you are done blending, wait. When you are done blending, how do I get rid of the hard line if it's already dried? Um, hard line. You, well, you want to continue. You want to use a continuous mister bottle continuous spray mister bottle to mist your paint while it's wet so that um, it doesn't dry up on you when you get that hard line. Um, if you just give it a spritz, um, not too much, then you can continue to work at it um, and eliminate or blend out your hard lines. If you don't have one and you went ahead and were blending and you have that hard line, um, if getting in one is not an option, I would just go back in with your paint in that one spot and kind of get it wet again with the paint and then blend it out. Um, thank you, thank you for the kind words everybody, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you. I forgot when I was telling you about my prep on this piece. I almost forgot to tell you I put some wood you bend on this piece. Um, I got some of these pieces from um, To The Nines. Um, she, she is a wood you bend distributor and um, so th all of this is wood you bend on the front except for um, this little guy down here and then the, on the legs and the pillars here. Everything you see on the drawer faces is wood you bend molding. So the keyhole and these little guys. Um, I don't remember which item number these are here on the sides, but they are now my favorite wood you bend design. Okay, one of them. I can't really pick a favorite, but it's one of my favorites. They're just so pretty. They remind me of the little uh, F holes on a violin. Um, anyway, so one coat of aubergine. Now we're going to be blending in some caviar and some amethyst to kind of give our piece some depth and some personality. I've got a few shop towels here I like to keep handy. I already showed you my mister bottle that I like to keep handy. And I got my brushes. So to apply the paint, I'm using, uh, for amethyst, I'm sorry, for aubergine and uh, caviar, I'm gonna be using the flat medium synthetic brush from Dixie Belle. Those are kind of my favorite brushes right now. They are a little bit of a must have, not gonna lie. They're perfect size for large or small or medium projects, not too big, not too little. Um, and then for our amethyst, the brighter purple, where I'm gonna be using a small flat. So small flat and medium flat brushes, those are what we're gonna be using. And then to be blending, I am going to use the bell brush from Dixie Bell. It's this little round, poofy, natural bristle brush, and it's perfect for blending, I like it. Um, so those are kind of the must-haves for me when I am about to blend something out, and so here we go. So I'm gonna start on my drawer faces. I'm gonna do one at a time. Um, when I painted the first coat on this piece, I took all the drawers out and I painted them individually so I can get the top lip and the side lip. And um, I put them back in when I'm blending kind of so I can see what the whole, it's, what it's gonna look like as a whole. Um, but then I will take them out to paint the cabinet portion. So um, I'm just gonna pull out our first drawer so we can start there. And what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and start painting it like I'm painting my second coat, like I normally would paint a second coat of paint on a piece of furniture. So um, first coat done and we're painting the second coat. And I'm just gonna do the entire thing in aubergine to start. And I've got my mister bottle here. Um, here in a second, I'm gonna give it a little mist of water to make sure that um, my paint stays a little bit wet. So the, the type of blendy blend that I'm doing, I want my paint to be not all the way dry, but I also um, don't want it all the way wet because I'll show you here in a minute, but I like, I like it to be kind of somewhere in between dry and wet because if it's too wet, then I'm gonna blend in my colors too much and they're just gonna kind of get muddy and not show. Um, but if it's too dry, then I just have those hard lines that you know, you're trying to avoid when you're blending. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint on the entire drawer a second coat. You saw me give it a little mist of water and I will do that again on this side here in just a second.
And then I'll get this side. Okay, give it a little misty mist. And when you're working with moldings or details of, of this type, you can, well, I'm sitting here painting it and I see it from this angle and I think that I got all the little nooks and crannies. But when I look at it from underneath or from the other side, I see all the spots that I missed. So when you're working with details in, in general, you want to look at it from different angles and make sure you're not missing any spots. It's super easy to miss spots, but um, if you just take a few extra minutes and look at it from some other angles to make sure you got everywhere, it'll save you some headache later when you're sealing it and then you see some spots you missed and you're like, oh, I got to go back and touch those up. You know what I mean? So um, we're just going to take an extra second here and do that. Okay, so one more little mist and I'm going to go ahead and start with my um, caviar which is a night, the richest black Dixie Belle offers and it's, it's a super, super duper uh, velvety black. I love, I love caviar. Um, I'm just lightly dipping my brush in and dra dipping my brush in the paint and then I'm just um, kind of, you know, scraping the excess off on the edge of my paint container. I don't want a whole lot. I just want my brush a little bit wet with the paint. So I'm going to find some areas that I want to shadow. So <clears throat> I'm thinking maybe, maybe we do like corners and stuff, you know, where you might normally find a shadow. So down here and then a little bit of, I don't know, maybe down here, kind of keep it symmetrical. Maybe we do that. Okay, so now I'm going to take my bell brush. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a little bit under this molding too. Because you would have a little bit of shadowing happening under the moldings. Right? And you would have a little bit of shadowing happening kind of under these moldings here. right under there and you don't have to like paint it on perfectly can you see that or is, is the um i can't tell if the reflection is uh kind of hindering you from seeing what i'm doing i don't know um jan i'm using aubergine amethyst and caviar from dixie bell um hi everybody um i'm sorry i hope you can see that i know it's reflecting from the windows the light in the windows um, hopefully you can see what I'm doing though. So um, I'm adding some little shadowing under these moldings, just lightly, gently. You don't need too much paint. Um, and then I'm going to take my bell brush and my shop towel, and then I'm going to just slowly where where those colors where I laid down the caviar. I'm just going to kind of blend it gently into the aubergine. I'm going to give it one one more quick little spritz of water, and then. See, I'm just kind of gently blending the colors in. Like, it doesn't take a whole lot of strokes to get that blending. Um, let's see. Maybe you can see it better. Like that. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully, you can see it. doesn't take a whole lot of strokes. Just kind of want to blend it in gently like that. Where the colors meet, you just take your blending brush. And you'll notice that every few strokes, I wipe my brush off. I'm trying to get that extra... Um, paint off of my brush so I don't just muddy up areas of my piece that I don't want blended or um, contaminated I guess, I guess you could say with the darker color so see how that's creating just a shuttle a sh shuttle shadow it's creating a shuttle shadow subtle shadowing and you'll probably be able to see it more as it dries um, because of the reflection but Okay, so I'm just subtly blending in my caviar, and I think I think I want to go a little bit heavier on this side with the caviar. Um, I don't want this super symmetrical type blend going on, so I'm just going to add a little bit more caviar in here, and then blend right the line where those two colors meet just kind of blend it back and blend it out like go back and forth fairly gently and slowly
See, easy peasy. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of my aubergine. Pick some hairs out of my paint here. I love this bell brush, but sometimes they do shed a little bit. Um, it's fairly new, I've only used it a couple times, so I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt that a couple more times and it won't shed quite as much. But, um, well, I'm gonna give that one more mist of water, and I'm gonna go ahead and I got my flat small brush and my aubergine. I'm gonna go ahead and dip that in my paint and, and kind of scrape the excess off on my jar, just like I did with the caviar. And I'm gonna go through and find areas that I wanna highlight. So pretend like the sun is shining down on my piece. Where would the sunshine be hitting? It would probably be hitting kind of some areas up top like this. Some of the more raised areas. Um, probably would hit on the top of this molding a little bit. And um, we'll just come in from these top corners just a bit with our um, amethyst. Just a little touch of amethyst in the top corners. Okay, not, not too crazy, see there? And then I'm gonna take my same blending brush, wipe it off so I don't blend in caviar on accident. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of go over what I just laid down with my blending brush. Just kind of give it a once over and do that a couple times until it starts to kind of blend in to the background. Super easy. You don't have to overthink it and try to get crazy with it. You just kind of subtly blend it in by kind of going over it a couple times. Give it a few little strokes and then I'll get my corners here. in this corner. So my paint's starting to dry up on me, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this drawer done. So, can you see how easy that was? Like, you don't, you don't need to sit there and spend an hour trying to blend it out. It kind of just blends naturally. When you're using similar type colors, like purple, two purples, two blues, um, you know, two different reds or red and orange or similar colors, it's much easier to get the blend to happen on its own, if that makes sense, with just very little help from your brush. So we're gonna go ahead and, um, I'm trying to get this to where you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and push this drawer in just a little bit and we'll work on the second drawer. Like I said, when I painted my first coat, I took all the drawers out and I painted them thoroughly. So I got all the edges and everything like that. And then when I'm blending them, I like to put them back in so that I can see um, the whole piece together as I do each drawer. Because I want to know what it's going to look like, <laughs> you know. Um, any questions so far? I don't see any so far, so okay. All right, well, we're gonna keep on going on to draw number two. So I'm gonna pull that out a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and just start painting on my second coat, just like I normally would if I was just painting a flat second coat, no blending. Just gonna get that on there, get my coverage, make sure I didn't miss any spots. Um, so, yes, I use a Mr. Bottle when I am um, blending paints, but I also, um, also what the Mr. Bottle does, it does a couple, couple other things. Misting your paint with water while you paint does, does a few things. It, a, it helps you blend, because you can't blend dry paint, right? And then um, it also keeps the paint wet long enough and workable enough long enough for it to self-level because Dixie Bell is a self-leveling chalk mineral paint. So if you are um, painting with it, and I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that sits there and tries to, some people will sit there and overwork the paint trying to perfect every little stroke. I'm not one of those people typically, 
but um, a lot of people are like that. And if you sit there trying to overwork the same spot over and over and over again, or you look back and you miss a spot and you're trying to go back and touch it up, it, well, your paint's already drying. So when you go back and touch up those spots, it's gonna leave brush marks um, where you've already went, where you've already gone over with your paint. So misting it with water helps to keep it wet long enough for the paint to self-level and level out those brush strokes. Um, also, what misting your paint with water while you're working, also what that does is um, it helps your paint go a little bit longer. So you might notice when you get open a when you open a jar of, of Dixie Bell paint, you might notice that some colors are a little thicker than others, particularly the neutrals like French linen and um, burlap and driftwood is pretty thick. There's some thicker colors. And I'm heavy handed with paint anyways, so when I'm painting, I use a lot of paint. I lay down a lot of paint. Um, and that could potentially, I mean, that's just kind of a waste of paint. And I, I know that, I can't help it, I'm a heavy handed painter. Um, but when you miss the, miss the paint with water, it will help, it'll make it last longer, it'll go further. So it's especially good for heavy handed people like me who just kind of lay down a lot of paint, mist it with water and continue painting and it will go a lot longer. So for instance, instead of using a 16 ounce on a dresser, you can probably get away with an eight ounce on an entire dresser if you're misting it with water. Um, that's just an example for you. It helps it go a lot further. So three good reasons why you should invest in a mister bottle. They're not very expensive. You can get them from the Dixie Bell website. You can also get them from I hear Hobby Lobby, the beauty supply store, Amazon has them. Um, it's called a continuous spray mister. And as the name implies, you can mist your paint instead of a regular squirt bottle that just squirts water on it and you get all those drips and like nobody likes drips. Unless you're going for a drippy look, which I pretty much never am, but the continuous spray mist helps to just mist your water like you're misting the fruits and vegetables in the produce section you're not trying to drench them you're just trying to get them a little wet so okay moving on to my caviar on my second draw I'm gonna go ahead and create some shadows under here under these moldings and coming down a little bit And then let's see, let's do the same thing kind of over here, um, kind of underneath our moldings in this bottom corner. We'll do that. Sounds good to me. There's no exact science. You can create highlights and shadows wherever you want. I just, it helps for me to have a reference. Um, so that's why I reference the sun shining down on a piece. You know, where would your highlights be? Where would your shadow, shadows be? It helps me to reference that. Now, you don't have to think of it that way. You can put colors willy-nilly wherever you want them, but um, I like to, to kind of have a method so everything's a little consistent, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so I got my um, the Bell blending brush that I'm using, and I'm just going to kind of just go over where I laid down my caviar and just kind of blend that in. Um, as a shadow underneath my moldings here first. And if you want it darker, then just do repeat the process. Just do the same thing over again. So I think, hmm, I think I might do just a little bit darker of a shadow right here in the center. Okay just a little bit and I'm just going to kind of blend that outwards a little bit okay so right easy peasy just a few strokes and blendy blend it out no big deal so now I'm gonna go on my corners and I'm just gonna kind of swoop and ah, hand cramp hand cramp <laughs> cute okay so where I put my caviar I'm just gonna kind of blend in um, when you're blending on details it helps to just kind of pounce them um, so you can get all those little crevices and things but we're just gonna kind of pounce pounce on our details to get those blended out just like 
just like this. Okay, so now we got to do our amethyst on draw number two. So, um, <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. So I'm going to go ahead and dippy dip my brushy brush in the amethyst just a little bit like that. And I think I want to highlight my moldings here. So I'm just going to kind of brush on the tops of my moldings here. Oh, we could probably just come down like that on this one. Oh, let's just go. Let's just let's just highlight this whole middle area here. Right here like that. Let's just highlight it like that. So, add a little bit of amethyst and then kind of pounce it onto the tops of my moldings. Remember the sun is shining down on our piece. So, we get a little bit more amethyst and I'm just going to kind of come down here on these moldings like that just like that and same thing on this guy just the tops just coming down from the top and I got my blendy brush and I'm wiping off I wiped off all my excess caviar and then I'm just gonna kind of blend in my amethyst going over my details just like so can kind of pounce around them details, kind of just gently blend that in. So pounce, 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 pounce. And then this top little section where I went kind of ham, I'm just going to go back and forth to blend that into the, um, uh, the aubergine a little bit more. I want that part to be pretty subtle. So All right, so I think, let's see. Okay, so now I got this little guy to do. So I'm just gonna kind of brush it blended real quick like that. Give it a few more little strokes and then pounce around my details to get those nice and blended in and blend it out on the details. And then, oops, I see a little drippy. If you spray too much water, it will drip, so make sure you mind your drips. Nobody likes drips. Nobody likes drips. Blue, uh, name is, what is the name of the blue one? What is the name of the blue what? Um, so there's a reflection on my piece that looks kind of blue in my screen anyways, and that's actually my blue garbage can reflecting on the wet paint. So this is all purples, but now that I'm kind of seeing the reflection of the blue, I kind of like the blue. I think we should add some blue. I need some cobalt. I'm seeing the reflection of my blue trash can on the piece. And it's making me think I should add some cobalt into my life here. I mean, I'm thinking we're gonna have to do it because I see it now and it, it's... <laughs> Don't take away my inspiration! No, no, take it away. Otherwise I won't be able to tell where I'm putting the blue. Thank you. Let me grab my cobalt. We're gonna... Throw some cobalt in this mug real quick. I need another brush. Ah! Oh, we're going to grab a bill. Okay, so cobalt blue, if you're not familiar with cobalt blue, is this electric blue. Yeah, so uh, you are seeing, the electric blue you're seeing is a reflection. Um, but it's inspiring me to make it a reality instead of just a reflection. So we're going to go ahead and start adding in some cobalt blue. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give a little misty mist to what I already painted. And I've got a bell brush for my cobalt blue because we're just going to kind of um, dab it on some spots here. And I'm thinking, let's see. <laughs> 
I see it kind of through the middles of the drawers in my, on the reflection in my video. So I don't know if that's how you guys are seeing it too, but that's what we're gonna roll with. So um, I've got some cobalt blue here. Look at this electric blue color, yee. So I'm just gonna dab actually like in the lid, I'm just gonna dab a little bit onto my bell brush, just a little bit and not a whole lot. And we're just gonna start with, a little bit because you can always add you can always add more but it's kind of hard to take it away so I'm gonna come in and do just kind of through here a little bit of the cobalt blue so no you are not seeing real blue paint but now yes you are seeing real blues added Isn't that funny how things can inspire you like just randomly out of the blue like uh, I don't know like say my trash can reflecting into my video. So if I would not have done this live on painting this piece I never would have had the um, inspiration to add a little bit of cobalt blue. So things happen for a reason people you know what I'm saying. So I'm going to blend that out just a little bit more here through the middle and then I'm going to dab just a little bit more. I am totally digging it on this, um, the bottom half of this molding. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of dry brush it almost onto the bottom half of my molding and just continue that. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. It's almost like um, it's almost like I'm trying to create a reflection, to be honest with you, because I'm just doing through the centers like that. So I'm just recreating the reflection that I see in the video. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that's not inspiration, I don't know what is. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot to blend out this other little detail over here. I got to do that one before it dries. So a couple little strokey strokes, a little dabby dab, pouncy pounce, and that guy's blended out. Okay, so um, I'm gonna add a little bit more cobalt blue to our moldings here through the center and just kind of blend that out into the center. Little subtle we're going for, little subtleties with the cobalt blue, Not nothing too crazy, okay? Nothing too crazy. Um, so as that dries, um, as that dries, you'll see less of the reflection, more of the cobalt blue. So um, I think that fate definitely intervened on that one and said, girlfriend, you need to add some more color to that. So that's what we did. So now we got our last draw here and I'm going to go ahead and pull that out without stabbing myself in the face. There we go. All right. So back to um, coat number two of our aubergine. And Make sure that you are misting it while you go. Keep it wet because we have now three more colors to add to our blendy blend. And let's see. See, I don't know um, what kind of brush y'all use to paint with, but. This is a reason that the flat medium is one of my absolute favorites as of late because it's flat so it's perfect to get these like the lip of the drawer and the sides of the drawer but it's also big enough that you get some super duper awesome coverage without you know spending five hours trying to paint it so it's not too big not too small it's probably you know like if Goldilocks was looking for a brush and she needed a brush. It's not too big, it's not too small. You know, like, you remember that story, Goldilocks and the Three Bears? This one's just right. OK. 
Okay, spray. I want to look at it from other angles, make sure I got deep down in those details there. I'm not missing anything. Okay, so I think we're good there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do my uh, caviar first, and we're just going to go underneath these details here, create some little shadowings underneath the bottoms of our moldings here. Do, 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 and there, and there, and right there. Okay, so we're going to take our blendy brush that we were using for that and I'm just going to go over where I painted my caviar and that will blend in the caviar very easily and nicely. Just kind of a few strokes going over right where I put that. I'm going to add a little bit more caviar. We're coming down to the bottom of our piece so I feel like the shadowing would be a little bit heavier in real life so that's what we're going to do. Some little bit heavier shadowing and then um, Go right over that with our blendy brush, gently. One big old long swoop, whoop, that's it, okay? That is, well, a little fine tuning here, boom. So let's go ahead and blend in these guys. I'm just gonna kind of pounce, pounce the color blended over those details. That's the best way I can blend over details is just kind of pounce at it. And same thing here, just kind of Pounce it in. Make sure you don't have any streaks or hard lines where your colors meet. And now we're gonna add in a little bit of amethyst. We're gonna do a similar type thing on this top draw that we did on the um, previous one. I'm just gonna kinda come in from the top down with my amethyst, like a highlight, folks. You know what I'm saying? Like a highlight. Okay? highlight and then I'll just blend that in gently kind of pounce it over the details um, yeah I think that'll be good and then just kind of blend it in to the background a little bit with some gentle strokes blend it into the background Okay. Okay, so now we're going to do our cobalt, our, our latest and greatest addition to this color palette, our cobalt blue. Actually, um, looking at it now, I kind of want to go back and add just a little bit more to this draw here. So I'm, I'm almost just kind of dry brushing it on I don't have my brush totally soaked in it and I'm just kind of pouncing it on like dry brushing. Okay, and there we go. That's yeah, more like it. That's more like it. All right, so we're gonna do that same thing to this middle guy here. I'm just gonna start kind of pounce it on to that little middle molding there. And then just come through the center like it's reflecting right off the center. It's like, it's a blue trash can reflecting. When people ask how I got the inspiration for this piece, I can literally say the trash. That'll be awesome. All right, cool. So I'm gonna add a little bit more cobalt blue to um, my moldings here, just a little bit. And I think we will call it a day on the draws and that is it. Now all I gotta do is um, take the drawers out and I will paint the body of this piece in the same manner 
as I did the drawers. So let's see, let's scooch in here a little bit. See the cobalt blue? And I know it's kind of hard to see in the reflection, I'm sorry, but um, sorry the paint wet is creating that reflection, but whoa, whoa, there it goes, ah! Okay, so I can't wait to show you guys this when I'm all done, um, which will hopefully be sometime this weekend, unless I stay up all night. I don't know. So, quick, um, let's see. Uh, can you show me what you used the shine on? Shine one. Um, the paint is just wet. It's not shiny, so it once it dries, it'll be matte. It will be matte. Um, let's see. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, the bell brush for blending. It works perfectly. I wouldn't mind one that was a little bit larger. Wink, wink for larger projects, but the bell wor brush works great for blending. So, um, swoopy swoop, somebody remind me which one is, oh yes, the, okay, so I'm reading these questions backwards, I'm sorry, I'll go through it. <laughs> My bob wig, I'm gonna have to wear that real soon, I know it. Okay, we're starting to get stabby here, I'm gonna have to go through and read these comments later. Talking about getting stabby up in my comments. Okay, so anyways, there she is again. Whoop, whoop. I will see y'all later. Have a good weekend and stay safe and healthy and uh, wear your mask, all right? Bye.